I'm Catherine Smart. And I'm Rochelle Bingham. And this is Reality Mums, your go-to podcast for reality TV, pop culture, mum life, and all things in between. Hello and welcome to another very special episode of Reality Mums. My name is Catherine Smart. I'm joined by my co-host Rochelle Bingham and I mean, I feel like this gentleman needs no introduction. He is everywhere right now. We've got TV presenter, red carpet reporter, podcast host. We've got the amazing Justin Hill joining us today on Reality Mums. Welcome, Justin. Oh, I feel so honoured to be an honorary reality mum today. It's very exciting. (laughs) And it's our first birthday as well. Today marks the one-year anniversary of our podcast. Oh, happy birthday. I tell you what, 12 months in the podcast land can be a long 12 months sometimes, but an exciting 12 months, that's for sure. Absolutely. And we're all about having fun. And we've met up with you a couple of times now in person. And we just thought, who better to have on on our first birthday than Justin, just to have a good old chat? I mean, you'd probably be sick of seeing me everywhere. So, like, why not have me on your podcast, right? Oh, why not? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're having such amazing success. Um, as you said, you, you're everywhere. You're the host of podcast, The Streaming Service. Um, you're the host of the Hey You original show, Loud and Proud, which streams globally. And I just feel like every time I look on Instagram or TikTok, you're interviewing somebody famous somewhere, like these red carpet appearances. You're going from one to the next, your hair's blonde, then it's brunette, then you're in Darwin. It's just, (laughs) it's like, wow, like 2023 (laughs) has been huge. What are the, what are the highlights for you? I mean, if you can pick them. Well, do you know what's crazy is that like, I feel like a lot of us in the industry, kind of went through COVID and we were like, are we even going to be able to do this stuff again? Like, will this be an option for us to even be able to go to red carpets or go and, you know, go and do junkets somewhere? But so I think for me, I'm just excited that I'm back doing it. Do you know what I mean? I feel like, and that's the vibe I get from a lot of people when I go to red carpets with them is that they are equally as excited. So, but I do feel like you're right. 20, that's my dog. Come this way (laughs) <laughs> it's very on no, brand she'll for stand, reality mums and she'll stand serious. like <laughs> right and she'll also stand just far enough away from me so I can't grab her anyway she might bark a few times um but 2023 has been a huge year like I so many things to pick from I mean you we've got Barbie just like I feel like I got swept into the Barbie vortex for like a good you know like two weeks solid and we had Mission Impossible around that time as well you know um but I guess if I was to pick one highlight from this year so far would have to be the launch of my show um like you said on Hey You Loud and Proud it just was a real career milestone and I feel like there are a lot of us that there are different things that are important to different people. And I just feel like that for me was like something I've been working towards for such a long time. And Hey You were just so wonderful. They were, they were really um, very particular from the, from the start to make sure that it wasn't just another kind of world world pride you know grab like they were very um it was a lot of care and attention taken to make sure that the the tone and the topic was like you know um as it should be and then also to to have Andy freaking Cohen come from the premiere I mean it when they told me it was so funny because we were we were actually at another um, Housewives event and it was the Real Housewives of Miami and um uh, one of the girls from Hey You was like, hey, I've got something exciting to tell you. And I was like, what? And then she kind of like leaned over and she was like, Andy Cohen's coming for your premiere. And I was like, what? And I'm like, <laughs> you're telling me in this public setting and I now have to like keep my cool about it? Like that's insane. So it was literally like every time I would like walk past anyone from Hey You at that event, I'd just be like, oh my God. like <laughs> you know, just knowing what was coming up and it was just so, and you know what though? It's funny because I never realized he's my daughter. Say hello. Aww. Say hello to everyone. It's your, Very. yeah. 
she can sit on my knee. Um, the thing was, is that I didn't realize how many friends I had that loved Andy Cohen. As soon as the, like they announced that he was coming for my show, I was like, oh, you're all coming out of the woodwork now because they're like, hey, can I get a, can I get a plus one or can I get a ticket to come, you know, to come and meet Andy? And I was like, very interesting. But, um, but yeah, it's just, it was just a wild whirlwind of a time. And I just, it, it almost feels like a fever dream when I look back on it and think that it was only a few months ago that we were, that we met up and, you know, and had the premiere and just, it was, it's just such an amazing moment. I'll never forget it as long as I live. Yeah, it was so, such a fun time. And you've met, well, obviously you're on red carpets, you do your podcast. Is there anyone that you've been really sort of like nervous to interview or that you've been starstruck by or? It's very, it's really interesting. So I I think a big turning point for me with red carpets was when one day I realized that the the stars are just as nervous to talk to me as what I am to talk to them. And because I never really used to get nervous because I was, I had this odd kind of confidence, you know, and I think it came from a moment where I interviewed Angelina Jolie and I was steps to you know people that that we as regular people would consider a red carpet heavyweights like you know Ange Bishop and just you know um Richard Wilkins and what happened was Angelina came along the red carpet and the publicist said I'm so sorry but like all of you will need to be grouped together and all 10 of you will only get two questions and you'll all just need to record everyone's um like everyone will get the same audio and me being the oddly confident person that I was like just kind of there was like half a beat when no one said anything when she walked up and so I just stepped forward and asked her a question and you should have seen the daggers that came from everyone standing around me they were like who the hell is this guy and what is he doing like you know and but I was like you know I had a good question Angelina laughed and she gave me a great answer and I think from that point onwards I really kind of like you know, they, I realized they're just people as well. So yeah. it really depends. So when I get onto a red carpet, um, if you ever see me in the background of anyone else's videos, I'm, I don't speak to anyone. I go very quiet. I listen to what's going on. I'm, I have become an excellent lip reader. So I'm paying attention to, to what's happening on the red carpet so that I can get a vibe for how everyone's feeling on the day because it can be they you know your talent can be in a bad mood or stressed or jet lagged um and so sometimes it's actually the ones that you know you think are going to be the scary stars that are actually the most wonderful they just you know they're having a great time they're happy to be in the country and then you know sometimes you'll catch someone on a bad day so there have definitely been some really exciting moments but I feel like every time I go to interview someone, I'm like, well, they're probably feeling a little bit nervous as well. So it kind of helps me to push down any of those nerves or channel them into like an, you know, an ex- an exciting energy and put into, you know, my chat that I'm doing. But I, if I had to nominate someone, I'd probably say Mariah Carey was probably the most nervous I was to speak to because it was the middle of the night. Um, there were 50 other media outlets on the Zoom call. I was one of I'm going to say seven people that got to ask a question. So you kind of start to, you know, do a bit of heavy breathing and think, oh, it's the queen of Christmas. Like I've got to ask her a really good question (laughs) and let's hope that she, you know, so yeah, probably Mariah would be the person I would say I was most nervous to talk to. Yeah. Yeah. Now you mentioned that all your friends came out of the woodwork when they found out that you were going to be speaking with Andy Cohen. (laughs) Now (laughs) reality TV has... I think it's gone up a notch. It's it's moved yeah. into this sort of new layer. We're in this new territory with reality TV, whether it was COVID that made that happen, but it's certainly got a whole new, you know, range of fans that are coming out of the woodwork. What's got you excited for 2024 with reality TV? Do you, do you sort of see it going in a particular direction? Um do you know any goss? Like what's what's going to what's going to be big in 2024? Well, I think a lot of people may not realise, but the reason that reality TV came about was actually from the last strike that happened in Hollywood. So, with you know, years and years and years ago when they had a, a strike similar to what we're seeing now, they couldn't do any scripted drama, they couldn't do any scripted TV shows. So what was born out of that was reality TV because 
you know, the the studio execs were like, well, who do we call on that's not like a, you know, um, a SAG member or, you know, um, someone that that will not be on strike. And so reality TV was born. So I'm very, I was very curious to see if it would impact reality TV this time around, but it doesn't look like it has, but I, w- I do agree with you. It's just gone next level. And I think what we've got to look forward to in the future is a new breed of reality TV stars that are coming via TikTok and they're coming via social media because essentially what they're doing on those social media platforms is they're letting us into their lives and showing a little bit about themselves and they're not coming via a casting agent or, you know, like the Kardashians did where, you know, they didn't start on social media, but now you've got these people with millions of followers and they already have an established fan base. And so people want to see more about them. So I think that we've got, um, a new kind of like season of reality TV where we will get to see some of our favorite, um, you know, like social media stars explore their lives and not in a traditional sense where, you know, because everyone wants to be a Kardashian. Everyone wants to be like, oh, my life's so exciting. Can can cameras just follow me around? And like, you know, it's just really just them doing their daily thing, which I think only the Kardashians can really do. Yeah. Um, but now we're going to see more niche kind of reality TV shows where, you know, if you've got a, a TikTok star who's worked out a niche for themselves in a particular area, it will basically just be a longer version of that, which is super exciting. And then we've got amazing shows coming up. I'm so excited for Real Housewives of Sydney. Um, you know, I've met the women. Yeah. Uh, very, I mean, from a goss perspective, I could already see some divisions within the girls. I won't say who, but like <laughs> I could already see a bit of an us and them situation going on. Um, yeah. And with that show, it's, it's, I feel like, Do you remember like the first time around, everyone was kind of like very, like in Sydney, you would say they were very Eastern suburbs. Like they were very, I guess in Melbourne, it would be like um, maybe Turak or I don't know, like what the fancy suburbs are, but like they were very kind of like that. Whereas I feel like there are a few cast members from what I've picked up who might be a little bit nouveau riche. Like they might be a little bit kind of like new money. And so they're not kind of like, yeah, it's, it's, I guess it's a little bit more in the vein of my other favorite TV show, which is um, Real Housewives of New York City, the new version. I feel like it's maybe a little bit more in line with that where they're not necessarily housewives. They, you know, they, yes, they might be self-made, but they're not like old money. They're more like young and fun and, you know, kind of living their best life. So I think we've got that to look forward to as well. It sounds amazing. I'm looking forward to Sydney. Um, And I've, I've enjoyed, I really like all the housewives. We watch all of them and we watch everything on hey you can i say i always look at your social post that says what's coming up for the week because i'm always like oh god that's right you know all kardashians is back this week and it always it's so handy i'm like i always see it i i I really encourage anyone on instagram to go and like um favorite those because then you can come back to them and be like now what's on what day what am i watching and when so just keep that up please it's very handy if only just for me (laughs) <laughs> and what's you need to know what's starting and what's coming like totally. Kardashians are back this week do you have a favorite franchise across everything not just housewives mm. uh, excluding your own because obviously your own <laughs> <laughs> well amazing. I'm not gonna play favorites <laughs> I would have to say um the Kardashians is just one of my all-time favorite shows and I it's very interesting because it's not very often right that you can go they have such a legacy with keeping up and then they moved platforms. Essentially it's the same show, but honestly, those girls could fart on camera and I would be more than happy to watch it. You know, <laughs> like I love seeing like just how rich and bougie and completely out of touch with the rest of the world. They are, you know, that they are in their normal lives. Just, I, I don't, I don't care even what it is. Like they could be doing the most mundane, boring things. And I'm still very happy to watch it and very happy to like follow them on social media. And I know, you know, I'm very in-depth detail about like what's going on in their lives. So I really hope that that shows around for a long time. I, I am a little bit concerned that they're pumping through seasons very quickly. I don't want them to get to the end of their deal with Hulu and be like, okay, cool. It's done. We're having a break. I'd like them to be around for a little bit longer because I think we're getting something like two seasons a year now, which is completely unheard of. Like, 
you know, to have that many seasons of a show. But my hope is, is that it's just simply because there's so much content, not because they're trying to rush through their deal, if that makes any sense. Yeah. I think yeah. there's so much that gets leaked about them. They're trying yeah. to get ahead of the ball because it just gets leaked all the time. So I think they're trying, and I'm hoping this season, I'm not a huge Kardashians fan. No, Catherine I is, am. But I'm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm hoping this next season is, new stuff that we haven't seen that's been all leaked because it's very fast. Yes, so and that was Courtney's issue, I think she was saying. Um, she said in a few interviews and even on the show she was sick of, like, having an issue with her family, having yeah. it leak in the press and then having to wait six months to potentially then rehash it. And so yeah. I know that that was a big criticism of her and then why they wanted to, um, you know, move to Hulu and be more hands-on and have more say in their story if they can even possibly do that because they were like, we're sick of waiting so long and then having to rehash this all over again with our family members. It's not good for our mental health. So, yeah, yeah I agree. I think they're doing a really smart job of, I mean, did you guys see the stuff with Kylie and Jordan? recently like that well, whole back state, together as friends it, friendship friends like again. back friends yeah sorry my dog hilariously i realized when i was no <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's was gonna be it's like, it oh well. my god how cute <laughs> is joined puppy? by the dog audrey <laughs> oh. being in yeah, the we've... curtains behind oh, i could see them moving behind you yeah. that was so cute oh, i was like oh it must be breezy where you are <laughs> no it's the puppy sorry about that um no, no. So I um I I noticed when that video was posted on Kylie's Instagram that of her like showing everyone that she was friends with Jordan again. Do you know it was actually an ad? Oh, oh. really? Oh. Well, it was it was like a staged PR moment. So Kylie has a big collaboration with the brand Acne at the moment. Yep. And what store do you think that Jordan and Kylie were shopping in when that oh video was God. filmed? And it all lined up with, at e- and I mean, tell you what, I always say, you know, the devil works hard, but Chris Jenner works harder. Like, yeah. you know, she is out there making sure those girls are doing things. Can you imagine what that group family chat would be like? It'd be insane. Oh, my God. I can't believe we fell for that. That <laughs> They were just I don't even think. Kelly. I'm losing my touch. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was an it was an acne store and it was in New York. It was um, you know, around Fashion Week. It was she had put up all of her campaign of her acne, you know, shoot that she did. And yeah, Chris Jenner made sure that if the world was going to talk about Jordan and Kylie being friends again, it may, it certainly happened in an acne store to make sure that they got some some press out of it. So wow. Can I tell yeah. you, I was cleaning out my makeup kits the other day because I'm a makeup artist, so I'm sort of retired now. And I have the Jordan Kylie collab. I have the eyeshadow palette and I went to throw it out when there was that drama with her. And oh, I was like, no, I'm going to hold on to it. Lucky you held on to it. (laughs) Could be worth some money. (laughs) Yeah, don't believe anything you read in the press, that's for sure. No, no. Now, we've talked about your favorite franchise. Uh, Now, when it comes down to individual stars, and let's talk housewives. Because housewives are always fun with this. What's your favourite mm. housewife, past or present? I've been very lucky where I met and interviewed a lot of um, the women. This week I'm chatting with Lisa Barlow from um, Salt Lake City, which is one of my favourite um, franchises as well. I can't wait to talk to her and just talk about Mary Cosby and, like, you know, all that craziness that goes on with that show. But i got to say um, probably one of my favourites because I just – got to spend some time with her when she was in Sydney and there was just something about her was um, Kyle Richards. And she just is like, she, I feel like with her, she's not just a housewife, you know, she's been an actress for a very long time. She was, you know, kind of like raised in showbiz, um, but just also such a lovely human being. And it's very interesting with this drama that's going on with her at the moment And, you know, kind of like my interactions with Mauricio. And, I mean, that man is just like, like, I've got to tell you, when I met him, he's the kind of guy that like, and you'll know exactly who I'm talking about. He walked past me and was like talking to a lot of us in the room. And he kind of like just rested his hand on my shoulder. And he's such a gorgeous, tall human being that I was just like butter. I was like, (laughs) 
Like he could have said anything to me and I would have been like, oh my God, he's amazing. So they're a very <laughs> dynamic couple. Um, yeah. But also too, I look at what's going on with them and I'm like, I feel like it's just completely PR for the TV show because, you know, Rinna left the show. There's there's that space open there now. So yeah, I yeah. feel like Kyle's just making sure that she fills up that, that storyline hole, you know, and keeps people wondering about what's going on. Um, but in person, super lovely, just so glamorous and beautiful and has such great style and, you know, even down to she was talking about the perfume that she was wearing and she was like, oh, I don't really like to tell people what perfume I'm wearing because, you know, then all of a sudden like this friend has it and that friend has it. It's Baccarat Rouge, by the way, if you're interested in getting it. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I it do. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, and so and I, I was like, it. <laughs> right, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'd say she's one of my favourites, but, and she would kind of be like my legacy favorite, but my new favorite would have to be Jenna Lyons. I just love her. Like, yes. I don't know what it is. There's just something about her. She's so like, I don't give an F about being a housewife. And I kind of yeah. love that. Yeah. Um, plus her beautiful apartment that she has. I just want to move straight in there. I would wear everything she has in her wardrobe because I feel like I would be able to wear it. Like, I just think she's a great example of someone who's kind of like the epitome of what it means to be a housewife. She's not like desperate for camera time and she's not, you know, yeah. you know, kind of like sacrificing who she is as a human being, which we see a lot of, we see a lot of staged. And I feel like we love those franchises because of those stage moments but with Jenna it just seems to be very genuine and she's just like mm, guys I'm I'm not getting involved in this like this is silly yeah 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 she is a favorite of ours we love her and I'm loving the new New York um Same. I wasn't sure how it was going to go but mm. it's been so good having it's refreshing to see that everyone has a place to exist so you've got Sonia and Luann doing their thing yeah and, and Crappy Lake was great like wasn't I thought it that also was really great I love yeah, that I feel, but I feel, it's so weird because it kind of got slammed a little bit online but I actually really enjoyed it I was like I feel like it's kind of a brilliant concept to to send some of the zaniest housewives to a place like that and rumor is they're going to do other locations which is wonderful Ooh. but um you, do you know the the gossip around New York about how there's actually a missing housewife no. Missing housewife. So, yeah, in. so apparently there was actually another housewife who filmed for two weeks with the cast oh. before leaving the show. And that's why when you watch the show now, you know how there was like an instant divide between like Erin and I'm trying to think who the other girl was that she didn't get along. Maybe Bryn. Bryn. I think you know how they were like straight off the off the yeah. mark. They were like not yeah. great friends. Apparently it has a lot to do with that missing housewife because she's a friend of Erin's. And apparently she mm-hmm. said something that was quite controversial and that's why she left the show. Uh, and it was some kind of like argument between Erin, Bryn and this missing housewife. And Erin is still friends with that housewife. So that's why and it kind of then made sense to me when I was watching it I was like oh yeah, yeah okay so so yeah. the, they didn't necessarily use footage from those two weeks that she was there but the fallout of whatever happened in those couple of weeks is very evident in the friendship group so yeah the there stuff you, you learn yeah oh it was Lizzie Savetsky yes. I've just been googling while we're talking to you so that that's yeah. there you go so yeah. Lizzie is apparently a friend of Erin's and yes. um and that's how that dynamic fit together. And that's why, so she had some kind of like falling out with the girls and that's why those kind of like groups were formed. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they were there from the start, weren't they? And it, mm. yeah, it makes sense. Um, we've talked a lot about housewives and we want to know what would your housewife tagline be? <laughs> Oh, you know, I regularly think about this and I regularly practice it because I just think to myself, you never know. And it's yeah, so funny to. in, you know, with, with Sydney coming back, every person I talk to, all of the gays, they all want to be on The Real Housewives. Like, it's just so hilarious. So I feel like we we in particular already have, you know, alum taglines ready to go. But I think mine would probably be um, uh, maybe something like um, a red carpet's not going to walk itself. Someone has to do it. Oh, nice. Perfect. That <laughs> that's a good one. It's on Some brand, right? So crappy. Some are so bad, but that's a good one. 
Well, so many of them, I've heard them say that they apparently record lots of them and then the producers choose and they, yeah, so they don't particularly love the one that they've done because they're like, I actually recorded three of them and this was just the one that they went with. And sometimes when you do watch the show, you know how you watch them and you're like, well, that's, that's not really them or that's like, like I think Jenna's is something about false slashes. And I'm like, "Ah, I feel like they probably could have done better with that. But usually the case is, is that they do quite a few of them and then they look at the mix of how they go together and then they, the producers choose. So it's like on drag race, you know, when they leave and they say, exactly. It's very similar. I'm like, I wonder how they come up with them. Do they get cold or is that just something that they have? Yeah. And some yeah. queens do it and some queens don't. And some of yeah. them are hilarious. Like, yeah. um, I don't know if you've ever seen Miss Vanjie. Like, she literally yeah. just walked backwards and just said, Miss Vanjie, Miss <laughs> Vanjie. And RuPaul lost it. Yeah. And consequently, Vanjie has made a complete career out of it and got cast in, in All Stars and all sorts of yeah. stuff. So always have your tagline ready, I would say, because you just never know when it's going to come in handy. I'm going to go work on one this afternoon. Um, so that's <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some homework for us. For sure. You're just a wealth of information. I cannot tell you how much we have enjoyed this. Um, I mean, I'm speaking oh, on behalf thanks. of Rochelle and I, but I feel like we it's could right. talk for hours. Um, uh, but what you know, it, we you know do... what though, most people don't like the the information that I have, so it's actually nice to talk to two people who are actually interested in it. Yeah, <laughs> and look, that's where this podcast came from because we. Yeah. Used to- we used to talk back and forth on Instagram in our DMs, which then became a, hey, let's do something together, yeah. which has now turned into a conversation where we're sitting with you on our first birthday. So it, it's. And it's also, too, you've had some massive guests on your podcast. It's epic. I mean, you've had that hunky Captain Jason and, you know, you've been to some of the biggest events it's so great I've, I've got to say congratulations on such a stellar first year because you're just kicking you know reality tv show tv show goals so congratulations thank, thank you, you so it's been much. amazing yeah so much fun yeah good yeah, yeah and we've love loved it. meeting each and every one of the people that we've met at these events so we hope to have you on again soon wishing you all the best for the next year um can only imagine what heights you might reach next year given the year that you've had for 2023 um thank you for joining us today justin it's been a pleasure my pleasure thank you i can't wait to come back on soon thank you for having me great thanks so much see you later bye reality mums acknowledges the traditional owners of lands and waters that this podcast is recorded on 